All right, boys, this is Semphis' guide to sensitivity. I'm going to start with NVIDIA options. Um, this is what most players do. Um, either people turn everything off, like literally everything, or they do what I do, and you click Restore Defaults. This is just a habit because we go to just different tournaments. Turn VSync off. Got to turn that off. Maximum proof render frames. I like that to be at 1. That means it's like uh, you're not going to get any frames like pre-rendered. It's going to give your mouse a smoother movement. Um, if you have it four, you know, it'll add a little bit of input lag. Mm, some people just use uh, 3D application. I feel like one has better be benefit in terms of uh, feeling like your mouse listens to you a little bit better, but that's just me. Aspect ratio, full screen, no scaling. This stuff, uh, you know, a little bit of a preference, right? So aspect ratio is going to give you black bars. Uh, full screen is going to give you stretch res if you use a 4x3 res. Um, stretched, you know, uh, versus black bars is not what this video is about, but um, that's another thing, it's just preference, right? What you like to play as. So uh, on on these things, if you have this option, always use display. A lot of people think, oh, they use GPU. Display scaling makes it so your monitor does all the work, okay? When your monitor does all the work, that means that um, there's less strain on your GPU, and you know you might not think downscaling your resolution is that much, but you can definitely feel it. Um, there's some people on different forums that have done um, tests, and there's definitely input lag when you use GPU. So put that on display if you can. Um, Windows 10 doesn't always let you on every monitor, but anyone on Windows 7 should be able to do it, no matter what. Now, going into the game, we're going to have uh, a couple different options here. So we're going to go to keyboard mouse. Okay, so raw input. Raw input on basically means that your mouse sensitivity is going to be unaffected by Windows. So it's going to take the signal right from the USB port of the computer and it's going to go right into the game. So there's going to be no other. Um, third-party program affecting it, so it shall be the most pure form um, of input you can have. Now, that's not to say that having it off is bad, but having it off is technically worse. So you should have it on. If you don't, if you don't know the difference, put it on. Okay. Now, if you've used it off your whole CSGO career, or you came from 1.6 or another game that didn't have ROM put, and you just feel like you know, you're better with ROM put off, then use it off. You know what I mean? There, there, there's not a there's not a reason just to force yourself to be worse just because it's technically better. If you're used to something, you might just be better with it like that. So just leave it. Um, now I'm gonna explain, you know, what it what happens if you have it off. So if you have ROM put off, if you go to the pointer options in Windows, if you have ROM put on it will always be locked on six. It doesn't matter if you use it, you know, that or one. Uh, it's always going to feel like six every time. So if you use it off and like say you use five at 11, it's going to make your sensitivity a little bit slower. So say you used, you know, three sensitivity on uh, five at 11 windows. That would be like using 2.2 sensitivity on six at 11 windows. Okay. So, and also when you use uh, 5 at 11 windows, it's going to make your cursor move to the left at 0.75 pixels opposed to one on the right. Just like if you go up to the right, it's going to be just the reverse. It's going to be faster to right, slower to left. Now, it goes down even, it's like 0 0.75, 0 0.5, 0 0.25, you know, it, it just moves like that. I don't know the exact values, but basically, if you do use ROM put off, leave it at 6. Unless, like I said, you're just used to it being on five and that's just what you played with your whole life. Because even if you played with something that's technically worse, if that's what you're used to and that's what you're good with, just use that, man. It's not worth, you know, you learn to play like that. So just leave it, um, in my opinion, you know, unless you're feeling like you're in a slump or you want to make a change or something. So now moving on to mouse acceleration. So when you go to mouse acceleration, a lot of people think, oh my god, mouse acceleration is so bad, turn it off. Now, if you're a new player and you've never used anything, I think it will be easier for you to just use it off personally. You know, like most players will benefit from just you know, turning mouse excel off. However, if you came from Quake, another game, you've used Excel in 1.6 or Source, you know what? You can be a great player with any settings. You know, you can use Excel. Swag uses Excel. I use Excel in 1.6. Um, a lot of players uh, use Excel in, in other games. You can be a good player with Excel. However, 
if you do use Excel, it's very important that you cap your FPS. Most people say to uncap your FPS. However, if you use Excel, you want to put it something your computer will always get. So save a sick comp and you can get 300 no matter what. Okay, so then put it FPS max 300. If your computer is the worst, put it, you know, 200, whatever, um, the value you can consistently get because the way that Excel works is in CSGO for some reason, um, this is a flaw by the way, it shouldn't be like this. If you use two sensitivity with Excel and you get 400 FPS and then a big battle breaks out and you're now getting 200 FPS, um, your Excel will actually feel slower than if you had 400 FPS, you know? So it's gonna actually feel, n not that Excel wasn't inconsistent in how it felt already, now it's even more dependent on your FPS. Ha uh, in my opinion, you know, if, if, uh, if you, always get 300 FPS and use Excel, you're going to be able to predict Excel. You're going to, you're going to learn the pattern of Excel. I, I use it in 1.6. I had no problem like being able to, uh, uh, to, you know, to pre-aim and, and be able to predict how the Excel is going to act. Cause you know, something, it, it is something that's consistent. It's not like Excel just randomly changes. It's just something you have to get used to. Now going into CS, we're going to start with high sense. So again, some of this is my opinion. Some of it, um, will be based kind of on other players and stuff like that. So going to, you know, uh, set it a pretty high sense. I think there's not many people that use over 3.5 cents. So someone like Forrest, you know, he uses 3.5 cents. Now, the thing about this sense is it gives you a lot of control. Um, you'll be able to be very accurate if you want to be. Um, this isn't a setting or like a sensitivity I'd recommend for like, people that aren't comfortable like if you're not comfortable with high sensitivity you shouldn't use it just because it will create more inconsistency and you would probably benefit especially as a newer player um especially as a newer player being able to you know hold angles play smarter play more passive with you know you know around two cents or something like that that's just my opinion now if you're naturally just good with high sense um that's another story Benefits of high sensitivity, in my opinion, are your spray. It's very easy to pull down. Okay, so um, when you you know you turn a corner and you see a guy, you, it's very very easy to spray people down with high sensitivity. It's very easy to just you know pull down in general. Um, now, you if you're having an off day, you're gonna really feel it with a sensitivity like this. You know what I mean? It, it's gonna be very apparent when you're just whiffing and nothing's going your way even if you try to play smarter um you know if, you, if your aim's just off a little bit it's a lot harder to grind out frags with higher sensitivity so it's not always advised as a, as a a friendly one you know it's something that you're really good with and you know you practice with for years generally um now moving into what i consider the best in my opinion, this is the sensitivity that's best for tracking aim. Okay, so you come from Overwatch, Unreal Tournament, whatever. Um, now, when you use like a sense like three or you know around this sensitivity, it's very easy to follow people. Okay, so what does this mean? You're going to be very consistent on killing ecos. Um, you'll be able to track people really well with an op. Uh, my fa I like around this sensitivity when I op just because I feel like it's very um, it's very beneficial um, to track people when they run around corners. Like if you're holding like this and a dude's gonna come, it's very easy, you know, just trace him with an op. Because not all that when you op, you don't always want to flick people, right? You don't always um, you don't always need to just like be going crazy going with like crazy flicks and stuff sometimes you just need to be able to um hit the shot right so if, if you see that guy you kind of track him right there um it's hard to give examples all the time but uh it's just it's just very easy to move your crosshair like controlled towards people with this sense you know so it's very it's not as flicky it's not as fast but it's like very it's a very controlled um, this guy won't beat me. It's very, it's very easy to just kind of control it to where you want to go. So that's just my opinion on like uh, that sensitivity. Um, now this is a sense that you'll see a lot of people using when uh, 
They use kind of like a medium sense, I would call it, like 2.5. This is something you know you'll see Scream using around there. Um, you know, for those type of people. This sensitivity is, very, uh, is a good balance for aggressive players because it lets you flick, but you can still check stuff and you can still be pr a lot more accurate um, than like 3, 3.5 very quickly, you know. Like, a lot of times when you use like above 3, you're very good at, you know, kind of tracking aim, like I said, very good at being precise. But when you entry and you're playing really aggressive, you kind of just want to snap someone's head off real quick, you know. And this sense is like very ideal for that, you know, someone like Rain, you know, those type of people, they use around this. So I definitely think there's a trend in sensitivities. Um, it just, uh, it, it just, it just makes it a lot more, you a lot more versatile if you want to be an aggressive player. Now, that's not to say you can't be aggressive with like really high or really low. It's just uh, in terms of consistency, it, it's just definitely you know one of those things that it's, it's just going to let you do that. Now, when you go to a sensitivity that's really low, you know, say you want to use. 1.7 or something now this is a sensitivity that it's gonna let you be like obviously you're not gonna miss very many easy shots however positioning becomes a lot more important you want to be positioned really well you want to be a smart player you probably want to get a kill and fall back this isn't the sensitivity you want to just fly around with and just kill everyone you know you want to be like oh I got my easy ass kill now I'll fall back you know reposition get let another guy fall in your crosshair it's more about playing you know with your IQ than like your aim you want you, your low sense is just ensuring that you don't miss the easy kill that you set yourself up for um, if you go b beyond lower sense you know that's just preference I wouldn't advise going much lower than that I'm not saying no one can but it's gonna be very hard for you to turn around and um, that kind of thing so I definitely think you know a sensitivity around this is more about positioning uh, teamwork making sure that you're not gonna get flanked because you know if someone flanks you, you you gotta you gotta swipe two three times you know to actually turn around. you could do a big swing but you know it's not like 3.5 cents where you could just flick in the dude and actually get the kill now on to my last sensitivity 2.2 um, this is a sense that has to be the most common from like really good pros. Um, this is something Kenny S uses. Shox uses 3 with 5 at 11, which is 2.2. Uh, Cold Zero uses 1.1 1 .1 on 800 DPI, which is 2.2. Uh, Flame uses 2.2. Um, Config uses 2.2. So as you can see, a lot of really good players use 2.2. Um, this is a, just like a really nice balance for everything. Like It's not too slow that you can't turn around easily it's not too fast that you're gonna whiff easy kills it's just really consistent you know there's not really a negative to the sensitivity other than the fact that you might not be good with it it's just you know you can always find a pro or a con you know really low sense you might not miss easy kills however you might not be able to churn fast enough it might be hard to retake sites it might be hard to do X Y and Z too high of a sense you know you might have off days you might miss easy kills you might be really bad with you know a certain weapon just because it senses too high when you use 2.2 I mean you're, it's never going to be too high or too low you're always going to be able to do kind of everything you know and that's just something that I definitely like this sensitivity when I'm rifling I definitely really like this like around here this is uh, what I generally use um, when I'm opping I usually use somewhere around um, 2.8 it definitely doesn't make my rifles as good but I personally can um, I find it easier to you know to, to op I feel it's easier to op when you can move when your movement gets better and you can um, you can kind of slide around and hit and move your crosshair in like little little movements like this it makes it much easier for me um, but like I said you know Guardian uses 1.3 cents um, Kenny S uses 2.2 I don't know what Henny uses, but he uses like high zoom sense plus like a relatively high sense. So, you know, Alu uses like 3.3. There, there's different people using everything, guys. So that's the main point is like use what you're comfortable with. But I'm just kind of explaining uh, my opinions on a couple things. Now, when it comes to mouse, mouse pad, this stuff is all preference, guys. Okay. Now, if you use a Hello Kitty mouse and it has a terrible sensor okay but you were amazing with it you're you're in ESCA main you're 
slaughtering pugs. You got crazy RWS. Don't switch your mouse, man. Like just what's what's the point? If you're really good on something, just keep using it. There's there's not a reason to switch. Uh, Guardian uses a Kinzu V1. This mouse has prediction, positive excel. It's in all cases a terrible sensor. But you know, obviously it works for him. He's really good with it. So would it make sense for him to switch to, you know, a Zowie FK or a Steel Series mouse for no reason? No. So if you just look at a mouse and you're like, well, theoretically, the Logitech, you know, X, Y, and Z has the best sensor, you know, they do have great sensors. I've seen Logitech. I've been to their Switzerland office. They literally have the best sensors on the market, bar none. They're, I've seen everything. I've seen the, the these huge devices they have that spin the mouse around. I've seen all their, like, data that they've had. Okay, their sensors are the best. However, if you do not like the shape of the mouse... There's no point forcing yourself to use what is theoretically the best mouse if it's not comfortable in your hand. Comfort is by far the most important thing when it comes to gaming gear. If you use a mouse pad, if you use a QCK Heavy, let's just use that for an example. If you use a QCK Heavy and that's all you've used, and then you think, oh, well, my favorite player uses a Razer mouse pad. Razer mouse pads are generally much faster than a QCK Heavy, but that's what you're used to. Don't switch just because, like, you think something's better. If you like the QCK Heavy and that's all you've ever used, it's going to feel very weird to use a very fast mouse pad. Um, you're going to have to give it a couple weeks um, to even get used to it in the first place. Same goes for a mouse, you know. If you have used a Death Adder your whole life or something like that, um, you know, you might be able to transition to an EC1 or EC2 pretty easily within a week or two, and that wouldn't be a bad decision. Maybe you like the mouse more. I'm not saying not to try new things. I'm just saying, like, if you go to an EC1 and you're like, everyone's like, oh, this mouse is so sick, or you go to the, you know, the Logitech 403, which is a similar shape too, and you use it for a month and you just aren't as good as on a, as you were on a Death Adder, go back to the Death Adder. You know what I mean? Like, maybe that's just the mouse for you. Uh, that's something that people don't realize. You just have to use what you're good with. Um, it's not to say don't buy new mice, don't try new mice. Um, just be realistic with yourself. You know, if you always use a something and, and that's what you are comfortable with, just use that. Even if theoretically it's not the most optimal for um, the game or technically the best, because realistically you're a human and you're not gonna be able to utilize perfect sensors and perfect mouse hertz you know tons of players use 500 mouse hertz that are better um than other players using 1000 mouse hertz and 2000 dpi and stuff like that so don't worry about that um uh yeah that's basically just my thoughts on sensitivity and stuff like that so i'll talk to you guys later and i have to turn this off peace